Welcome back to another Scribus tutorial. In this video, we're going to be drawing some different shapes and looking at the different settings and properties uh, for these shapes uh, in Scribus. So first, we'll just start a new document. We'll do single page, that's fine. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is just do a text frame. So we'll draw a little text frame here, right click, and we'll get some sample text. And then we have some sample text to look at on our document here. So let's say we wanna draw, in the last video, we put in a, an image frame and we flowed the text around it. So let's draw just a regular square. We can draw it right down here, or we'll do it like a rectangle by left clicking and dragging. And now we can change the size of this rectangle. It looks very similar to a, a, a text frame. We can control it, uh, the size of it. If we wanna rotate it, we can come up here to the rotation tool. We can click, click on, select our uh, frame and then click the rotation tool and it lets us rotate this around. Oh, back here. So we can rotate it uh, any way that we want to. And we can do the same thing with our, with our text frame. Any frame can be rotated. So we can click this rotation tool and we can actually rotate our text in here too if we wanted to. So I'll hit Control Z and undo that. Let's take this frame and let's drag it up into uh, our document or our text. And then let's bring up the properties for this uh, shape that we drew, this rectangle box. We right click and we go to properties or we can hit the F2 key to toggle, turn that on and off. And then we go down to shape, just like we did in the last video and it's disabled, the text flow around frame. But if we want this text to kind of go around here and not through it, we just go use frame shape. And now wherever we move this shape and however we resize it, the text will always just flow around it. That's what that's called. And if we rotate it some more, the text will just flow around it. So let's draw another shape. Let's come here to this. This is actually, it looks like a little star. It's a polygon tool. We come and left click and drag and it draws a polygon. So this has four points and we can change this. We come in here to shape and we click on edit and then we have some different options. For number of corners, it says four. If we were to give it five, if we wanted to make a star, we'd give it five corners. We can control rotation here as well. If we don't want to use the other tool, but we go to apply factor and this is where we can turn it into more like a star. Then we can like, I don't know if we can click on these blue things down here. Yeah, we can just click on these blue points and kind of control the way that this star looks. And the cool thing about this is we can actually keep it, if we wanna keep it just like this, we just hit close and we can drag this around. We can rotate it like we did our, our other objects, rotate it around and we can drag it in as well and go to the properties for the star and we say, flow around. So now we've got this flowing around here too. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, I think, yeah, if we just double click on it, it just brings up these options. We can change this uh, really quickly too, without having to go into shape, without having to click on uh, shape and then edit. We can just double click on an object and it lets us control the different points of that as well. So this is, I'm controlling different nodes here. And this is kind of getting to the next tool that we're going to look at, um, which is the Bezier tool. So let's close this. Well, first let's do just a line tool. So this is the regular line. If we click a line, line's kind of different. We just left click once and it draws the line and then we just grab the points that we want. And the line is the one where we can come over here to uh, the line properties of this line. And this is the one where if we were doing a cutout, for example, we just have a dotted line, we'd make it dotted. And then we'd say the have the start be a pair, look like a little pair of scissors and have the end look like an arrow. And so now we have like some scissors and an arrow. So we have a line we can cut along. If we wanna cut along something more advanced, this is the Bezier tool that what we'll get into. Um, it's right here. So we click on the Bezier tool, that just lets us click. We left click a couple points and we can either create straight lines to cut out. And if we left click and hold, we can create a curved line and we can just have it end pretty close to there. Press the escape key when we're done now we have this sort of shape that we've made and we can come make it like dotted lines and have it be scissors as well. So we can say, let's have the scissors start at the, at the end of it actually, maybe have scissors uh, M, was that medium? We'll do scissors L for large pair of scissors. And then we'll have the end of this. Oh, actually that's gonna be the beginning. Oh no, that works. So now we have this cut out shape we could do right here. So that's using the Bezier tool. If you're not familiar with the Bezier tool, you might want to check out some other videos and learn how it works because it's, um, you, 
there's not a lot of times you're going to use it in scribus, at least not that I do. Um, but for drawing shapes, you can. A lot of times, I'll actually use Inkscape and then import uh, the art from Inkscape into my document. But if you want to have it flowing around, which I don't know if we can have it flow around this line or not. Let's see. Go to Shape. Yeah, so we can actually flow it. So this is flowing it in. It's only keeping it away from just the line because this isn't a, a complete enclosed shape. But it is sort of making sure that no text ever goes over top of those lines. Does that make sense? That's kind of a weird application of that. Okay, there's this one here that's an arc I kind of skipped over, but it just draws like this kind of Pac-Man looking guy. And the reason it's not a circle is because it always has an arc. If we double click, we can change this arc. We can change the size uh, of X and Y. But if we ever try to close and make a full circle, it just makes a, a line, like a complete line. So we can create like a sliver of an arc, or we can create like the Pac-Man, like a thing here, but yeah. So this might have different applications. And then of course, just like we, we've already kind of learned, but maybe if you didn't like put, connect the connect the dots between this, we can actually go into the properties here and go down to our color, and then we can do a fill and stroke. So we can make this black, or we can make it any color that we have in our color properties, and then we can change the stroke of it as well. We can make it have like green for the stroke. And then to make the stroke larger, we have to go to the line settings. Oh, I saw, so here's line and we make the line thicker and make it not dotted anymore either. So that's just way too big. That's one thing I don't like is that it's uh, not super granular, the sizes. So you gotta like manually type in sometimes. Anyway, you wouldn't use, if, if, you're really, if you kind of like this and you're, you're really wanting to get into drawing shapes and doing things, check out Inkscape. It's also a free free program and you'll want you'll want to use Inkscape to do all your create your shapes for the most part unless you need to have those shapes interact with text but even then there's there's some workarounds but I just wanted to show you that and playing with these shapes can get you really familiar with using the different sections of the properties menu we've got line shape color drop shadow can we apply drop shadow to some of these no anyway that's what I want to show you in this video Hopefully that was informative and appreciate you watching. Catch you on the next one.